And God bless you. So last last week. Last week, um we started a conversation um uh, on the unsatisfied sex life. And the Lord helped us. And he also made it he also made it um, obvious to us that there was more. And so I remember that in in sharing, um, we, 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 we have not covered everything necessarily. However, I am also aware that the Lord helped us. And there's nothing that the Lord speaks to us that is wasted. Uh, so he really blessed us and really, 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 really helped us. We continue the conversation this evening by his grace. And remember that, as we know, there is any variety of reasons why there would be an unsatisfied um, sex drive. And if I if I ask, um, see, one of the things that we learn, or one of the things that, I mean, is, is true for some, is that that drive and not having it, you know, legitimately satisfied began before marriage. It began before marriage. So it is not something in some situations, it's not something that it's because, oh, you know, um, my husband, this or that, this or that. You see, the problem was already there. The hope was that the marriage, in the marriage, you would have that drive met. But the problem was there before. Um, the marriage in some situations. Then I also ask myself, what would happen? What shall we say for someone, for someone who, who gets married and then let's say, for example, God forbid, unexpectedly, the husband goes to be with the Lord. And due to any number of reasons, it's probably not mm, the best picture to remarry. If you've not remarried for three years, what happens with such a person? Does it mean the sex drive has disappeared? If you've not remarried for five years, for 10 years, if that person never remarries, you see. And so sometimes it may appear as if, you know, um, if there's a sex drive, then it must be met. If it is not met, then it means that somebody is doing something wrong. It is not always the case. It's not always the case. What will you do if, for any number of reasons, 
maybe there is ill health or something like that. The person is alive and yet is not available in intimately. Even if they desired it, they can't. And see, and also, what, what, what will you do? Now, if you would not recommend all sorts of strange solutions to these situations, then it means that there is a way, you see, there is a way of walking that walk. There is a way, irrespective of the reason. For some, the reasons are involuntary, like some of the examples I've given. For others, it's because of problem, you know, various things, all sorts of, you know, scenarios. It is true. God has a way of solving those things when we walk with him. It is true. The angle that I'm talking about right now is if there's a way of walking this walk of a sex drive that's not being met, then there is, I mean, that then that way is there. Obviously, Someone may say, hmm, you don't know. Hmm. Some people, yes, hmm, they are not married. They are not really married, but you know, hmm, they do something, something, whatever, whatever. But I don't think that we can say that everybody does something, something, whatever. Even if it's one person, even if it's two people on the face of this whole earth who walk the walk and are not dabbling in all sorts of strange practices secretly. There is a way of walking this walk. Whilst you are walking with the Lord concerning whatever issue there is, and by God's grace, I know that whatever issue there is, as you and I continue walking with the Lord, we are helped. There is a way. There's a way where that sex drive should not lead me to sin. There is a way. You see, appetites of the body, appetites of the flesh, are there. And sometimes if they are not satisfied over some periods, there are many options as to what should happen. But the question is, should my appetite control me? Should my appetite drive me? If my appetites are driving me, if my life is being ordered by my appetite, be it, let's say, let's say, somebody has an appetite for luxury. You will say, oh, as for that one, I mean, it's not essential. I mean, you can you, you have not sat in those shoes the person has an appetite. They, they have a greed and a covetousness and an appetite for it. I mean, like, eh? and if they are not having access to it, at first, it's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. One day, one day, to be all right. One day, one day, it's all right. There comes a time when for that person, for somebody, they might say, hey, Charlie, I thought it would be okay, but hey, so you see, the unrestrained appetite will cause sin because the appetite is not a, an appetite of the spirit. It is an appetite of the flesh. You see, just like even food. Obviously, you and I know you will not go without food for even three months or six months or one year successfully. Typically, you will eat here or there. However, if you put it in the food context, and say that, hey, uh, so what will happen if somebody somehow is without food for three days? The appetite for food doesn't mean that because they don't have food for three days, they, they, they should steal. Will you commend them? Will, will, will you commend them and praise them and say, I understand, I understand. Oh, you've not eaten for three days. No wonder you are stealing. Oh, well done, well done. I think 
you don't have a problem. Is that what I would say? Is that what you would say? Forget what you and I would say. When that person appears before the face of the Lord, after living that life of stealing on the basis that uh, I, I, I go hungry, will the door of God's kingdom be open to this thief because of hunger? So appetite is there. And the pressure of an unfulfilled appetite exists. But must my appetite, whatever that appetite is, must it overpower me or must I overpower that appetite? And how? As I share this, I am trusting the Lord to be to, to continue to help us. And I am I know that He's given us understanding. Con continue to consider this. I am also actually sharing with you that consider the excuse that you give for how you are yielding to the appetite. Consider your excuse. Consider your excuse. I remember long ago, many years ago, you know, there are some teachings that you are taught or you hear and some, some things stick with you. In that teaching, the, the man of God drew our attention to something. He said, well, remember, okay, first of all, you know that in science, science, eh, an example, in science, you have a, when they are, they are doing experiments, they, they have something they call the control sample. Right. There's a control sample. Then you've got the other set, which is subject to your experimentation. So for example, maybe you are testing to see uh, how people respond to extreme heat. You will have one group of people who are kept in normal temperature. They are the control. Or, and, and then you've got the other set of people who are subjected to the extreme heat so that you can compare the two. And if... If you hold all other things constant, it helps you to say that, oh, the whatever reactions you are seeing, whatever reactions you are seeing to the extreme heat, I mean, whatever reactions you are seeing is due to the extreme heat because these two groups are both human beings. They are both the same. They are both exposed to the same conditions. The only difference is that um, this one has the added situation of extreme heat. You see, so if I see that those people start, you know, fainting and stuff like that, I may draw some initial conclusions that, oh, heat, extreme heat causes fainting and stuff. Okay. Now, he, he was bringing our attention by the grace of God to the fact that the situation that I am in at any point in time and the situation you may be in at any point in time, there is, there are other people on the face of this earth who are also going through the same or sometimes worse situations than what I'm going through. So if it is, let's say, a sex drive that is not satisfied, maybe I have... You know, one person has a situation where, okay, by some, because of some problem, something, something, the sex life is not being satisfied. And that is an issue, yes. But on the face of this earth, there are a number of others who are having an unsatisfied sex life, plus, plus, plus. Okay, plus, plus, plus. So, their situation has been aggravated 
far more aggravated. And yet, for some of them, even the, the resources that they have, the help that God has surrounded with, them with, the training in life that they have received, their knowledge of the word of God is less than yours. And yet, that person, some way, because maybe I'm sitting in my house or I'm sitting in my corner, I think I'm the only one, I think I've done well. But that person is standing in a certain way that is pleasing to the Lord. When we stand, and I say, God, but you know, I tried, pa, I tried. You know, it's not feasible, it's not possible. And God brings before me, before you, your control, your other person, and says to you, do you know what? For you, I give you this support network, A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. I gave you an introduction to my son from this age. This, 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 this. I taught you about the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, I showed you this, this, this. This other person didn't have this, didn't have that, had only this and that. And yet, leaning on the little I gave them, they walked with me through that harrowing experience. You will find that your excuse with us. As they say, you, your excuse will with that. You, your, your, your mouth will start shaking because you will find it difficult to explain yourself because you can see that there is an ability given. There is a capacity given which you did not draw on. You gave yourself an excuse. You clothed yourself with an excuse and you thought it will hold water. What you didn't know was that no, God is not deceived and he can prove things to us. You see? And you might not always necessarily be shown that person. But remember, in every situation I am, you are. There's somebody going through worse and standing. And if I know God, he is the same. There's no God version 1, version 2, version 12. The same. And he has said, I don't show any partiality. So what is my reasoning? What is my reasoning? He's saying to you, the excuse that you give yourself, re-examine it. That you tell yourself, oh, yeah, due to, uh, and that's why I cannot help myself. Let me do this. Due to that, 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 let me do it. Let me do something that I cannot stand and preach from the scripture and, and, and recommend to the whole earth. Let me do something that I cannot do it for the glory of God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Even if, even as I begin to masturbate, I want to masturbate for your glory. Lord, I'm watching pornography with the Holy Spirit to the glory of the Most High God. This is to honor you. You can't do it. You can't. You can't. Let me stand in front of the church and, and propose to them based on the, these scriptures here and there and there and here and there and there. That under pressure, uh, you, if you keep, you know, some, 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 some kind of relationship somewhere, God understands due to, you know, Judas chapter 5 verse 22. You can't. You can't. If I can't. As I ponder what the way of the Lord is, one of the steps, one of the important steps is to strip myself of excuses. Let me stand bare with my, my, with my appetite and my, 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 my actions, owning them before the Most High God without excuses. Let me own them before God without the excuse, without justifying that's eh, it's because of this. Eh, so if you can you imagine? No, 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 no. Strip it away because it won't stand. And if I justify myself 
with excuses. If I explain to myself why my appetite must control me, must lead me in the wrong way because it's not my fault, because it's somebody's fault, because, you know, it's natural, it's normal, something, something. If I do that, I will not be open to the help God gives. So it's a it's a fundamental, very important beginning for some of us to really admit that there is no excuse for having my appetite, whatever, whatever that appetite may be. There's no excuse that my flesh controls me. It becomes like my God, like I'm, 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 my behavior is controlled by it. And that's why I am behaving like this. That's why I talk like that. That's why uh, my mood is like this. But he says that, do, I mean, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. You see, he says, for my mind to be set on the flesh is death. It is death. So it is better for me to confront the fact that I have an appetite that is warring against me. And it is an appetite of the flesh. Whatever the circumstances are that put me in that situation is another thing. But the fact also is that irrespective of whether it's because a, a, a husband traveled, husband died, marriage issue, something, whatever, irrespective of it, the truth of the matter is that I will still give an account to God for my decisions and for whether I, uh, for how my appetites were handled by me, by me. He's not going to ask my husband why I was watching pornography. That one is my choice. It's my choice. I see in the in the scripture that woman called Anna married for seven yes. years and widowed from there. And for years and years, she's in the temple. I thank God. You see, she's not in the temple complaining and murmuring about her problems. She's not in the temple struggling, you know, but she has dedicated or she had dedicated her life and it's the dreams, you know, the hopes and dreams and everything turned that fire into a pursuit of God. And she had won a relationship with God, which few had. There is a way to walk this. So tonight, I know that still there are many facets to this. Even as the Lord begins us this way, consider it carefully. Please consider it carefully. And I'm going to ask that as many as the Lord will lead to share one thing or the other, I'm, I'm going to please open that opportunity. And the Lord, you see, helps us. He has helped us. He says that the God of all comforts, he enables us to comfort others with the same comfort we have received. You see how many times you and I share with each other and we tell each other our stories what we were, how God helped us, what he has taught us. It's not only in the area, in, 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 what do you call it, in other areas. It is in every area that we can speak of the work of God. In every area, God is interested. So as the Lord is with us, I will be inviting anyone that the spirit of God has shown you something, has taught you something relevant to this matter, or is prompting you to share something, which even to your mind doesn't even seem like, but he is prompting you that you share. Because what he said to us last week was that, like, there are things he's prepared through others that need to be shared. So please do raise a hand if, um, 
as you are prompted by the Lord, if God is giving you something, walked the walk with you and gives you, I mean, the ability and the prompt to say something. Please just raise your hand or even on mute and share it with us from this point on. Okay. So I'm looking out for that hand and as I see a hand, I will call. So please do raise your hand. Don't don't um, don't wait for me to not be speaking. Raise a hand if you there are to share. Okay, wonderful, Sister Nature. God bless you. Please start us off then. Thank you. Thank you, Sister. Good evening, sisters. Um, so I'm coming from a place where um my husband was sick for three years, and um. I began asking myself when I heard you talking that I don't even know how I sailed through, but obviously God helped us. Um, I can tell you for a fact that at the time when he was in that state, the last thing on my mind really was said. All I was praying for was that God should preserve his life. Um, we have four kids and um, and then I really, really wanted a different um, scenario for, for them. So when you read um, Matthew chapter five, verse 30, the Bible says that if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Now, when you come to John chapter 15, verse 11, it says that these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might abide in you and that your joy might be full, that my joy might abide in you, that your joy might be full. So we are talking about a place where we are completely submitted to allow our Father to abide in us and to help our joy to be full, which means that there's a possibility that our joy may not be full, that is half full, and therefore we may not be realizing a certain level of satisfaction or pleasure in our lives that we so expected to happen. Now, when we are fully submitted to our Father, and our Father is fully abiding in us, the Bible tells us that in the presence of the Lord, the, um, at its right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So that includes the pleasure of sexual satisfaction. And so if any one of us is looking for that kind of pleasure, we say that it lies at its right hand. And so, when he abides in us and we completely abide in him, what is happening is that our soul is totally submitted to him. We understand that our soul is made up of our emotions, our intellect, and our will. And so when two souls will come together, the Bible says that in a relationship where a husband and a wife would um, be intimate, the Bible says that they shall be one because at that point, their souls are meeting. And so in the same way, when Christ take over and we are abiding in him completely, then what is actually happening is that the emotions, the things that go on in our mind, and even our will can be subject to him. That is where he tells us that in that submission, if it is your hand that causes you to sin, cut it off so that you can completely totally abide in him, that your joy may be complete. And he says that it is, these are some of the reasons why I have told you these things, that your joy may be complete. This afternoon, I was sharing with one of our sisters about a state of discontentment. Eve and Adam were giving everything that any human being could want at the time they were created. 
to the point where they completely lacked nothing. I mean, nothing. How was it possible that one apple made such a huge difference to Eve? She found herself in a state of discontentment, that one hand that she so wanted to keep. That state of discontentment made her oblivious to every other thing, every other provision, every other joy that the father had made available to her. And so when the enemy came in, it was so easy for her to trade everything for one bite of an apple. And so the Bible would say that if that one hand is what is causing you not to make it to heaven, then you ought to cut it off. I am not here trying to make little of any of our feelings or complaints. But you see, he's our father. He says that cast all your burdens on him because he cares for you, including that thing too. That dissatisfaction. And I pray that it's not coming from a place of discontentment. But if it is genuinely something that you hear and something that you seek for to make your joy complete in him, then talk to the father about it. Sometimes we may find our spouses in the state of sickness. Sometimes mm -hmm. accidents happen. And as the state they were saying, what if the person is even no longer alive? And what do you do with yourself? Do you find alternative means to create hands that will cause you to falter and send you to eternal damnation? Or do we completely abide in the joy of the Lord? For him to completely take over our souls and have that intimate relationship with us so that our joy may be complete. This earth is not an easy place to be. But that one too, our Father cares. And if we can submit it to him and not just concentrate on that one aspect of our life, that one apple, that one bite, then you would see that it's a case of 80% against 20%, that you have the 20% trying to override the joy of your life. I mean, as long as you have breath, as long as, I mean, some of us have got it all, except that one thing. And that one thing begins to mar everything else that the Father has made available to us. It's my prayer that our joy may be complete. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Sis, thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. And we 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 are blessed. Sister Corede, could you please uh, continue if you are in a position to? I think you had raised your hand earlier. Yes, please. Good evening. Good evening, sis. Good evening, sisters. Um, <laughs> I, I have, I found myself in a situation where the only word I can, the only way I can describe it is involuntarily celibate. And I've been this way for some time. And, um, it's been quite a, <laughs> quite a struggle, quite an issue, along with all the other many attendant life issues that, um, you know, that, that, every, that one deals with, you know, one would hope that, at least I hope that, you know, at least let this also not be um, part of my, my, my burden to bear. But um, fairly early on, I, I, it, 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 it arose, you know, like a, like a, it was, it was unreal how, you know, there were days when that's, it seemed like that's what I was thinking about. In the midst of all the many other troubles I had, I was this, you know, this is what I, I was on my mind. And I really struggled with where to go with it, what to do with it. How am I supposed to address this? What's supposed to happen now? Um, and, you know, God is kind because even here, he has made space. He has made room for me. He has um, worked with me as I have walked along this journey. You know, so 
you know, this isn't a, I've come out on the other end of it at this point. I'm still in the trenches. So this is a real trenches story. Um, so which is why I didn't feel like it was worthy of speaking about because, hey, I'm still living it. Um, and it's a real journey. It's a real day by day um, journey. I think it's it's Psalm 139 that talks about how you have searched me and you know me. Um, you know, when I sit and when I rise, you pursue my thoughts from afar. Sometimes even before the thought has properly crystallized itself into a, oh, this is an urge or this is a desire, the Holy Spirit will, he will nudge as, you know, maybe you shouldn't be watching that. Maybe you should get up and go away. Maybe you should, you know, and he would help me. Um, and in the times when, you know, it would be, you know, before, literally, Psalm 139, it became so real to me, so very real, where he, he literally would hem me in behind. Because I remember there was a day when I decided, you know what, this thing is not my fault. It's not my fault. It's not, I'm not here. I'm not, this isn't of my own making. So you know what, I'm about to, I need to fix this and I'm going to fix this on the way I know how. And so I went determined to cause what I cannot only conclude would have been havoc and chaos. <laughs> but he he has so hemmed me in that before I got there, he had made sure there was no havoc to be made, to be found. Before I reached my destination, he had cleared all, you know. <laughs> he had cleared the floor. So there was nothing for me to do but just sit there and be like, ah, what's happened here? And, you know, he had gone ahead of me. He hems me in. And this is, I don't think that it's particularly because I have this super special relationship with him, but it's simply because I had no, I have, I had nowhere else to go. I had nowhere else to turn. I had no one else to talk to. I had no one to take this to. There were no elders in my church. And even if there were, of all the things, is this what you go and see? Really? Will they not chase you out if they broom? I say, my friend, go and find some real, real issues. You know, there, there was no way to, to go with it, quite literally. So I would, I remember many nights falling asleep, crying, with this being one of the things that I'm crying about. Like, you know, literally, how help, help me with this to help. And... You know, I've never said to him, Holy Spirit, help me. And he has not helped me. In every situation, there are times when months go by before I even remember that, oh, it's been a while since I had sex. So wait, I'll start counting. Wait, how many months is it? Eight years now. Because he has so quenched, turned off that tap inside of me that I don't remember it anymore. And, you know, I've, figured out how to wrap myself in him or he has figured out how to wrap himself inside me so that I'm not awakening this thing that has no me legitimate means of being quenched so we help he helps me that way as well sometimes but there are times when I literally will go my own way and be like bro I'm a woman and I have needs and these, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm about to burst into flame here. I'm about to conflagrate like a human fireball. What are you going to do? Um, but even then, and even here, he's kind. You know, there are times I will sit and I'm, and I'm vibrating. My body is literally vibrating from, and from, from all of the, all of the emotions, all of the feelings. And then it's as if I'm feeling rain all over my body, this cool, soothing rain as I'm sitting. And I wasn't pray I wasn't praying because this was there's no prayer that can <laughs> that, <laughs> that helps this. But you know, it's a by the end of it, I'm praying because it's so sweet and it's so um calming and so refreshing. And I know that this is him soothing me and soothing me the way he knows how. And I am praying at the end of it, but I don't start out praying because I'm I'm a flame literally at the beginning. So he helps. You know, it's it's very difficult to say, you know, do this 
you know, um, when I was in uni, I was um, I pledged the Christian sorority, and we took we all took vows of purity. Um, then and we talked about how to keep our vows of purity. This was obviously when we were all unmarried. We were an unmarried single women. And, you know, we used to talk about how to deal with those kinds of issues, especially because many of us at that time had already been sexually active. And so, you know, we had we knew what we were missing, so to speak. And um, one of the things that um, we used to give each other tips, like well, when you start to feel um, the urge, go and pee. You know, if you pee, it kind of takes that desire away, you know, go and pee and then... If it, if it doesn't pee, don't take the water, take a shower, you know, most certainly a shower will help you to 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 fix that, um, the situation. But I found that in my adult years, and those things helped when we were younger, but in my adult years, those things did not help. Those things were very difficult. Those things, I would pee, I would shower. And, you know, this fire was refusing to be quenched. It was like a gas fire that you were pouring, that you were blowing with a, like a little pot that was blowing at it. It wasn't working. Only The only thing that has helped, the only thing that helps is the Holy Spirit. Um, and there are times when, you know, but he's just present and he's just good. So, um, like I said, this is a trenches story. Um, when I come out on the other end, I'll be back to come and tell you, you know, how wonderful it is now. But, you know, God is, he's faithful here in the trenches, in the walk, in the valley. He's faithful and he's walking with me. And I know if he can walk with me and I know the things I have done, I know how hard I have made it for him. I haven't been a particularly good student, but he's faithful. And if he can walk with me, he can manage me. And we can manage anyone else as well. So, amen. 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 God bless you. We thank God for the grace and for the sharing. God bless you. Do I hear, Sister Sewa, are you trying to say something to us? Sister Sewa Ousu. I think my phone is playing up. I'm really sorry. <laughs> That's all right, sis. That's Thank you. Right. Thanks. Um, Sister Anaya, please go ahead. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Efe. Good evening, sisters. Um, so a few years ago, I would spend my time when I was forced into... um when I found myself in the situation I was in, calling Pastor Adline and saying, how do I do about, what do I do about this whole um, feelings that I'm having? And um, sometimes the edges were so strong. I thought, I'm, I'm going to lose my mind. Then the Holy Spirit taught me something. So I'm going to sing a song just to, just to, <laughs> Go with what the Holy Spirit taught me, and then I'll tell you what he, he taught me. So he said, um, here we go. Sorry. I just want to make sure I get the word spot on. I don't want to get it wrong. So your grace is sufficient for me. Your strength is made perfect. When I am weak, all that I cling to, I lay at your feet. Your grace is sufficient for me. I've come to greatly understand what grace can be sufficient for. So there were nights that I would lie down with great edges. Then the Holy Spirit taught me to pray. Lord, take that edge and use it for worship for you. Use it for worship for you. I can't begin to tell you the number of times I prayed that. And um, God has been so good because now I look back at the days to weeks to months and to years and it doesn't even feel like I have 
being able to go through this without worrying about sexual drive being satisfied because God's grace is so sufficient. I've now got to the point where now I call Sister Efe and it's only as, as close as this week and say that now I don't even have any thought or any sexual drive and towards the person I need to have that to. And Efe would tell me, and I, I guess when we get there to God is able to do what he's able to do. You know, sometimes we look at things from our strength and from the point of view of the warped mentality that we had in, um, in our old life and in what we, we grew up with. And the thinking, oh, you can't do this. You know, why don't you find somebody to help you out or find some means? I don't know the ideas that are out there, but there are many. Because if you walk through the walk of probably not being celibate and and to God till marriage, and then you've 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 had to walk the path of fornication, and you've had to walk all sorts of all sorts of paths, then you think that you are unable. And in fact, God is able to do amazing things if you just tap into him. If his grace becomes what is sufficient for you, then 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 <laughs> then things things open up dimensions in him open up that you look back and you can't even see how you've done some of the things. And it's just God's grace. It's so sufficient. I think Sister Corridi started something she didn't finish. But I, I, I see the, the walking through that shadow, that shadow of death, that you know that that part of you, till Christ resurrects that part of, of that marital life for you, uh, is dead. Until... You walk through that shadow with Christ as that shepherd you are looking at and nowhere else. Then it's going to be a walk that's going to be done by the flesh. That will always be, oh, can I do this? I can't do this. And you are finding means. But if it's a walk that you start to realize without his help, without his grace, you cannot walk it. And you you gift it to him constantly. So I'm not saying that having had edges, I do. And when I do, I'm telling you, I wake up and I say, Holy Spirit, like you have taught me, God, I give it to you and um, use it for your work till such time. And he's doing it. He is doing it, sisters. And I pray I walk this walk with more dignity than I thought I could and continue to walk it till the time is right. So sisters, his grace is sufficient. Give it to him. Thank you. That's all I have to say, Effie. Oh, to God. We thank you, Lord. It says God bless you. Thank you for sharing. It's a blessing. Thank you. Sister Bettina, please go ahead and we'll come to Mama Augusta. Okay, thank you, Sister Effie. All right, so... um. My little experience um, in that aspect is that, um, so initially before my husband had to travel to go to school, um, we've never even been apart for a week, maximum maybe two weeks, but we've not been apart for even up to three weeks before and he had to leave. So, I mean, all my tears were based on how I'm going to survive down there, you know, <laughs> and how I was I was going to be. Now, when he left, I realized that at a particular time of the month, I'll be smiling, like smiling at anyone, ladies, if you know what I mean. Like I'm like, oh, hello, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and. You know, the amazing part is that uh, then 
Um, the, when he left the first time, then I had not really joined Closer Work Wives. I was not praying as much as we are doing now. And so my whole mind, like when he called me, when are you coming, this, this, you know, all because of um, that side of the marriage. But then I noticed, because this is what I have noticed, the journey with which, um, with how far God has brought me. I noticed that the year without prayer, with me smiling all over, you know, and, and you know, after that particular time of the month, I'm okay. But then the moment it gets around that time, it's like anything I see, I'm like, oh, hello, you know, and you have that strong edge and you, you are feeling like, oh, yeah, um, that kind of, that kind of stuff. So I realized that when I started to pray, when I immersed myself in prayer. In, in fact, I didn't even know that I would even lost the edge. I, I didn't know that it didn't really even matter to me anymore. But because I was constantly praying, you know, um, you're, you're so busy. You see, um, there's, there's, a, there's something that I want to say, okay? Unless you are not willing for the Holy Spirit to help you in that aspect. But if you are willing and you open up yourself to the Holy Spirit, he does help. See, when I was even delivered from those um, edges, I, I didn't even know until it was time for my husband to come back. And I'm like, Lord, uh, how is it going to be like? Because like, do I even have feelings anymore? Because I'd even forgotten I'd even lost track because the whole thing is that my mind is so busy. And you know how close I work um, is every three hours, you know, sometimes even every hour because from, from 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, then 3 a.m., you know, we are constantly at the feet of God. So I didn't even realize that. I'd lost the edge and I wasn't focused. My mind was not focused on sexual. And I cut myself off by the grace of God. I cut myself off all these soap operas and then they are crying and then I'm missing you. And then they are playing some kind of song with some sounds and things. And now I'm listening to worship. I'm, 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 we are praying. We are reading the word. You know, the moment you turn, there's this prayer going on that, and you are busy in the spirit. You realize that even when the edges come, you don't even recognize them anymore. And that was how God helped me. And at some point, when it, first when I called my husband, when are you coming? This, this, but he just realized that, I mean, that was not a conversation anymore. And by God's grace, when he comes, but God gives us the grace. So I thank God. I thank God. I thank God because there is a way and there is the chance and there is help. Because maybe you say when you are praying alone, you get bored, you sleep or something. But there, there are so many things going on in the spirit. There are so many engagements. So whilst you have the time and the ability to join, you realize that you are so busy with the things of God. We are praying for other sisters. You are interceding then the Holy Spirit chips away that edge and replaces it with love, empathy, with, with kindness, with the ability to intercede and stand in the gap for others, including yourself. So that's how God helped me um, in that aspect, that my husband can be away for so long and I've not even thought about it because I'm so constantly busy and, I, and, I, and I'm intentional about it. Because I just want to be about God, and that's how the Holy Spirit delivered me. Thank you, sis. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you for sharing what the Lord has done, how the Lord has worked. Glory to God. Thank you, sis. God is good. One more guest, please. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, sisters, for this opportunity, Saifi and Oris. I'm grateful. Uh, about four years, when my husband fell sick, 
before he was healed, uh, it affected his sexual, our sexual intimacy. So we can't do anything again. So, but by that time, one thing that happened to me was I depend by the grace of God on the Holy Spirit. Despite the edge come and all those, because we are in the same room, I'll be seeing him, his neck and all those in that drive will come back. When the Holy Spirit take over everything, my mind and everything, you see that always I will be worshiping, reading the Bible, then by and by, then all those things was out of my mind. I don't have that feeling again till the Lord restore him. So I want to say that when su such a thing happened in that journey, you don't depend upon your own strength. If you want to use your own strength, you will fall. Because we are human beings, that's why you are born again. That feeling is there. So when you put your trust in the Holy Spirit and you engage yourself into the things of God, going, uh, if you are able to go to church, you go to church, watching uh, a gospel, uh, listening to gospel music, the music and all those in worshiping God, reading the Bible, praying the language of the Holy Spirit. And I thank God so much for closer work that it helps some of us in a way, the glory of God. So you engage yourself to spiritual things. Then you see that the last of the flesh, those sort of desire will just go off. You will not even say you will stay in the room with your husband, like brother and sister. You'll be naked to each other, but you will not feel anything because of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the only one that can help you in this situation. So any sister who will fall or maybe have fallen into this, depend upon the Holy Spirit to help you because it's our only helper. Without him, we can't do anything. Your own strength, you cannot. You cannot, but the Holy Spirit will help you. If you want to ask uh, for advice from people, they will tell you all sorts of advice. They are worldly people. Some people are believers, but... They have those sort of minds that do this, do that, and that, but it will not help you. But when you depend upon God and depend upon the Holy Spirit, it will help you through and you overcome. Because that thing is only part of the marriage. It's not the full marriage. When you fall like that, what will happen? It will not glorify the name of the Lord. So may the Lord help us all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Mama Augusta. God bless you. Thank you for sharing as the Lord has led you. God is good. Mr. Fiona, please go ahead. Thank you, Sister Efe. And I believe I'm not going to say anything different from what all the our three sisters have shared, three or four sisters have shared. Um, it, it's a journey I've also walked. I'm, I'm sure most of you know that my husband is in the States and I'm here. It's not, <laughs> God God, God being so good, it's not a permanent plan. It's just um, the family situation and things. Uh, we have our plans that we're working out. But um, I, I, I agree completely with what all our sisters have said. I mean, I have to remind myself you know, about maybe maybe somebody will say because I'm not getting it, I, I've closed my mind. But the Holy Spirit is indeed our helper. Because, and I wanted to quote two scriptures here, Galatians 5 verse 16 and Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. Galatians 5 16 says that if we walk by the Spirit and we will not gratify the desires of the flesh, I'm saying this advisedly because, of course, God gave us sex. It, it's a gift he gave to us in marriage. So that is not a bad thing. You know, when the time is right, of course, we enjoy it. So that I'm not, I'm not being spiteful because my husband is not here. But if you, like our sisters have said, if you are focusing so much on the things of God, I, I will guarantee you when you have to walk through that dry season, you won't even have any urge. I mean, for me, I guess we are different. And then when, when we are talking, you have to be careful because people are different. You won't even, the edges don't even come anymore. You know, but again, I go back to Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. To everything is a time and season. My husband will land 
in, 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 in Ghana and I'm literally facing him. That's how it works. That's how God, I mean, the Holy Spirit, as it's just everyone say, he will help us and he helps us because he works it out in such a way that when he's not here, you don't have any edge. Of course, you are focused on the things. That you Look, I would even watch, I, thankfully, my, my mind is really fixed on the things of God now. So even these soaps don't interest me anymore. But I could be sitting there watching it. It won't do anything to me. I believe it, it, it's a stage-by-stage stage approach. And I'm not saying that if, if you are not there yet, then, you know. But it, it's the Holy Spirit indeed helps us. He does help us. And, I, you know, I wanted to throw in another side of the coin, which we haven't really spoken about yet. I, well, I think Auntie Augusta touched on it a little bit. There may be times when our husbands will not even be able to, you know, perform. And it, it's a big thing. Well, to, you know, it's, it's a big thing. But the Holy Spirit again helps us. Um, I like Sister Corridor's um, session in my school about oneness. Sisters, when you realize that you are one, you know, what happens to your husband happens to you. You won't be there complaining and I'm not getting this and I'm not getting my faith and I'm not getting this. You go down on your knees and pray. Take it to God. And you cover him. As Sister Corridor said, cover him. You know, he doesn't even have to see you getting irritated, you know, because God knows what is going on in his mind as well. There may be times when, you know, especially as they, 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 they age a bit, they won't be as powerful as they used to be. I mean, it depends. God is his own wisdom, you know, whatever it is, it is going on. But, you know, there are times when these things will happen. And when it happens, what are you doing about it? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit there and sulk and complain and, and cast snide remarks? And say, have you gone to the doctor? Have you done this? Have you done this? We've been taught better here at um, a, a marriage school, and we've had so much poured on us, so much grace poured on us that we have to remember that it's a union. We shouldn't tear the union apart. At any time, with our words, we know what we do. We know we have to wield our weapons, and that's that's prayer. At all times, he says, let's cover our husbands. Let them feel like we are helpers. We, are, we support them no matter what. You know, we've talked about the fact that husbands are not away. Are not here. They are, they are away. But there are also times when they are with us and it may not happen as it should. Sisters, we have, we have our father. We have the weapon of prayer. We can turn any man's heart the way he please. He has created our organs. He can fix it. But sometimes too, with our lips, we can destroy you know, and, and there's this um, sermon I was listening to about the mind. I'm hoping that the lady can come on how to series and talk to us. It's so powerful what the mind can do. Look, if you keep talking negatively, that thing will never get up again. We need to be careful. And we've been giving so much, you know, to him, much is given, much is expected. So that we should be there waging war, fighting on behalf of our husbands, rather than being the enemy in that bedroom. That's what I have to share, sis. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to our Father. Father, thank you for helping us and teaching us, showing us the way. Showing us the way. I know that God is deliberately enabling his daughters to speak because he has, he has taught us and he continues to teach us. He continues to help. Remember I, you can be or someone can be in a situation and it appears that, you, you know, there's only one way out or it appears that, hey, you don't know my situation. Look, me, you know, my edges are strong, my this, my that, my that. What God wants to tell you is that they are not stronger than his power. You, you, you put your edges and you put the power and grace, the spirit of God is able to make available. And you ask yourself, can God not do this also? And maybe because you've been sitting in church for a while, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Now in the reality of it, he's demonstrating to me, demonstrating to you through his daughters that the oh yes is really oh yes. 
and I thank God for the, you know, various elements he's bringing out. And I know that he's speaking to each one of us, giving us the rain we need, the help we need, the understanding that we need. We are changed by the renewing of our minds. There's a work that he's doing in us as we, our eyes are being opened to certain things. We are changed. And what seemed impossible and what is impossible with man, we see that there's nothing called impossible with God. Sister Abna, please, if you are still able to speak, please do go ahead and speak. I thought your hand was up for a moment. Ah, yes. <laughs> Good evening. Um, and thank you, sisters, for sharing your stories. It's, it's very encouraging. Um, because um, as Sister Fiona said, when, when she spoke, I said, ah, that's my situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. So for me, my husband is also in the U.S. It's been um, about a year and a half. Um, due to certain circumstances beyond our control, we haven't been able to arrange visits on either end. But there was one point I wanted to raise um in addition to what um our sisters have said and this is that sometimes yes we will have these urges and then if um you are you are willing to accept the guidance and the help of the holy spirit he will help you but in addition to that what i found was that when you are apart from your spouse in that way, you are in a very vulnerable position. You are in a very vulnerable position. And for me, the past year and a half, I found myself in that place. And if you are not careful about the kinds of relationships you form during that period, you can cause lasting harm, not just to yourself, but to your marriage, to your children, to your family. And so um, in my case, what I realized initially, this wasn't conscious, but I realized that I was drawing closer to an old male friend and he is also married. And so you think that, oh, we are both married, nothing is going to happen. But then I started realizing that he was taking the place of my husband in terms of how often we chat because of time difference and so on. And so when I came to myself, I started praying for God to help me resist this relationship. But in addition to that, I knew that um, this friend's marriage was not on steady grounds. And so what the Holy Spirit guided me to do was to pray for his marriage as well to pray that his marriage would be strengthened to the point where, you know, I wouldn't even hear from him for weeks and, you know, everything will be fine. And I found that when you ask God, when you ask the Holy Spirit, he answers, he answers our prayers. And <laughs> just the other day, someone was asking me if I had spoken or seen this friend and I realized that I couldn't remember the last time or I spoke to this friend. It, it's probably been months. And I realized that truly God answers, God answers prayer when we come to him. And so that was just one aspect I wanted to add about us being cautious about the relationships we form when we are in that vulnerable place, to be aware of, you know, the dangers don't think that, oh, these barriers are in place and so nothing can happen. We are human. And if you don't seek God's counsel, if you don't seek the Holy Spirit's guidance, you will fall to the flesh and you will come to regret it. And so mm -hmm. that's my personal experience that I wanted to share. Thank you. Thanks to God. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for these things, Lord. Thank you for the realities of your presence and your grace. We give God glory. Various, various things are being shared. And I know 
that God is reaching into corners that are necessary, that are necessary, that are necessary. Before Sister Marian, just one moment, I'll just, I'm prompted to speak this. And I speak to the person who needs to hear this. If, if you have given yourself, you are a wife, you have given yourself explanations and reasons why you, you, now you are the one withholding sexual intimacy from your husband due to hmm, whatever the storyline may be. Be careful. The Lord has always been talking to us here and saying that I talk to you here. You see, it's like me calling my, my child and advising my child. I'm talking to my child. I cannot go and talk to the whole school, but I can advise my daughter. I can advise my son. And God is advising his daughter. You have packed, you have moved out of your uh, marital home or um, your bedroom or whatever. You are doing shakara. You are doing uh, carrot and stick with your body in your marriage. If he pleases you, yes, yes, okay, fine. Now, I'm, uh, you know. If he's irritating you, he's not meeting condition one, two, three, four, five. No, you are not available. And you are explaining to yourself, eh, hey, but uh, even I don't even feel, even, 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 can you imagine, can you imagine, it hurts, I'm hurt, and I can't, and I can't, and I can't, and you are proclaiming that to yourself. And you refuse to seek the help of the Most High God to address the issue and also to submit yourself and make yourself available. You refuse it. You refuse it with various explanations to yourself. You have refused it justifying yourself. It is only here on this earth that your explanations will stand. And any work that you are working and it's not based on the word of God that he's spoken to you, any decisions you are taking, it's not based on scripture. You are just going your own way, doing what you like. In the same way as I account for my sexual drive and how I use it, you also will account for this thing you are doing. And some of the accounting will happen here on earth. And when it happens, say, but can you imagine what he has now done? Eh, when you sow bananas, when you sow mango, you will not reap, what do you call it? Granots. There are certain things that give opportunity for certain things. You can worsen, you think you have a problem. You can worsen it by your actions. Every action you take outside of the word of God in that situation opens the door wider. You think Satan is already operating in your marriage. Every action you take outside the will of God, outside the purposes of God, outside what scripture says, widens the door further for more of Satan's activities. So you in your holy righteousness, consider your, your thoughts and consider what you are doing and consider whether it's based on the word of God or it's based on fear, it's based on anger, it's based on malice, it's based on revenge, it's based on self-centeredness. Whatever is based on, check your Bible and see if the Holy Spirit advises you to work based on those. Because you are a child of God. My life, your life, it is ordered by the Most High God. I cannot act because of anger. And I cannot act because of loneliness. I cannot act because of something, something else. Whatever my actions are, he says, everything that I do, that's not based on faith, is sin. In the meantime, 
whilst you are misbehaving or whilst you are taking your actions not based on faith, not based on what the word of God is, at the same time, you are pointing fingers at the other person, thinking you, there are no fingers to be pointed at you. He is the one sinning. He is the one doing. He is the one not doing. But because everything you do not that is not done from faith is sin, you are not clean yourself. As you point the fingers, you have hundreds of fingers pointed towards you. You think you are fine. You are not. It is a call for repentance. Why are you behaving the way you are behaving? Some of us, because of this sexual drive and various other things, your attitude, the way you talk, the way you behave, the, it, the Holy Spirit is not leading you. You are leading yourself. You are running your show. And you have justified it. But if he does it, I will also do it. If he doesn't do it, I also can. How can I do that when he's not doing that? You are leading yourself. You are leading yourself. Please be careful, my, do my darling. Please, I beg you. I beg you. If Satan has come to plant pepper in your marriage, don't water it. Don't water that garden. And furthermore, he has left plenty seeds. Don't plant the rest. God bless you. Sister Marian, please continue. Thank you, sisters. I like what you say. When the devil has planted pepper, you, you don't water it. <laughs> Thank you, sisters, for sharing. Um, I can relate to what um Sister Fiona and I think Sister Abina shared. When your spouse, when they are away, you know, everything they said is true. But one thing I can also relate is that the Bible have told us to, 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 um, to know the devices of the devil so that we can withstand him and he will flee. You know, there are some men that knows that you are married and your spouse is not around, but yet they are interested to have dinner with you. So... Those invitations will come. What do you do? Do you go for such dinner or you don't go for such dinners? One thing can lead to another. For me, in my case, I don't go. So this is just one example. So anything that can lead to from one thing to another, because as she said, you are vulnerable. You know, your partner is not around. Just don't even open the door. You know, just don't open the door so that our sister, my sister said, you don't, if he's, he has grown pepper, you don't go and water it. And it is true, through this journey, I think is the help of the Holy Spirit. I don't even remember, honestly, like sex, you know, but when my partner comes, you can see the Lord, the whole atmosphere also changes. You know, the day he leaves, Everything also goes away. And I can attribute that to the probably to the time we spend in prayers, we spend in fellowshipping with one another, we spend in learning from bigger sisters and all that. There was one time I felt a bit, you know, because of time difference, I felt maybe I should speak to my husband more. And he wasn't making the time. And I spoke to Sister uh, Kafi. He is my toolkit um, leader. It's like, okay, maybe the Lord is just trying to tell you the kind of intimacy you're not having with your husband. You know, he, he, the Lord wants you to have that with him. And it makes so much sense to me, you know. So for my sisters, I would just say that you have to spend more time with God, you know, and he will sustain you, he will help you. He has from every part of your being before you even came to be. So that's a little I'd like to share. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, our dear sister. God is good. Thank you. 
Mrs. O, let me come to you, then I'll come to Sister Fiona, and then Sister Karen. So Mrs. O, please, if you could go ahead. Good evening, sisters. Good evening. To be very honest, I don't even know why I raised my hand, but I I joined late and from listening to the experiences and everything, I deduced what we we're talking about. And then I was just so amazed about it because in the last couple of days, I have been having this mind battle, no lie, about sexual intercourse and what I think couples should be doing and how many times people should be having sex and making love and how it's an expression of how we feel for each other you know and it's not mm -hmm. like i've been watching tv once in a while you just realize that some old desires and past things that you thought was going to be and suddenly you're saying and i'm like ah, but this marriage it's not like how i thought it would be like by now okay we've married we've given birth but so what so we should still be smitting over each other hands all over each other and i I was at a point, and usually when I'm having such talks, I talk, I'll end up having arguments with myself because the Holy Spirit has said that do not go and utter this word in the presence of your husband. I say, <laughs> you know, so when I pray about it, I just talk to myself and then I let it go. And in the last few days, it's come, and I think I'd even mentioned something to my husband, and he was just laughing. And I was like, hey, you know. <laughs> And suddenly, I noticed that when I go to read the Bible, it's just a word that I need. Uh, he will not give you more than you can bear. Uh, ask and the Lord will give. And I'm like, ah, we are talking about love and thing. Even this morning, one of the verses that came was, um, well, before this, blessed at the poor in spirit. I'm like, eh, how are these words you know, align to what it is that I'm feeling or, and then the Holy Spirit just brought back me back to how far the marriage has come. That's one. And the revelation that, Charlie, as it stands now, you know I have placed in your heart that you should be interceding for marriages and your friends' marriages and everything. And every day you go out, you hear about something that's not working somewhere. So why is it that in your house where things are working, you want to find something that is not working? And make it a matter. And I was just listening, you know, and then I'll be praying and I'm like, oh, so the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. And what it is that I need to hear, I am hearing. So really, if like everyone has said, if we stay connected to the Holy Spirit, some of these things, the devil will put it, even if the devil didn't bring it and you go and find it yourself, he will help you yeah. focus on it, you know, and it's almost like, there's fire, but technically it was a matchstick. So you have the power to quench it because it's just a matchstick that you lit. But if you don't quench it and you drop it somewhere and it catches the tissue and next time you realize it's catching the curtains and the whole house is burning because you didn't do that one thing about quenching the initial flame. So I just want to urge everybody that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes what we tend to focus on is really not... Is really not what the Holy Spirit requires us to focus on. Maybe, as one of the sisters said, it's the time for God to draw you closer to him so that he'll be able to re re release more blessings into your life. And through you, your husband will be blessed, your family will be blessed. So we just have to maintain our focus on God. Thank you very much, sisters. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God is good. God is good. Thank you for sharing, dear sister. Um, sister Fiona, please go ahead. Thank you, sister. Um, as our In sister fact, Fiona, I beg you, hold yes, on. Hold on. I'm going okay. to, there's a question. Yes, there's a question I've seen, and I will ask the question, and then as you speak, please. If the Lord leads you to touch it, touch it. Um, so the what the Lord prompted me to talk about, about the um someone who is withholding sex or use, I mean, for whatever reasons and whatever. So our sister is asking, so what about 
the man if like I have a husband, he's withholding sex from me. And um, even for two months, three months, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't, we don't make love. And meanwhile, he he seems to have a certain involvement with a, someone else. And sometimes even in my presence, he will call this person or that person can call him and that one they'll be talking. Even now he's outside, he's home, she can hear his voice and he's, he, I mean, to her understanding, she he's speaking perhaps to this this person. So, how about them? How about that husband as well? If we are talking to the wife, so in this case, this is the situation of me. It's not my fault. So I'm not in the position where I'm the one with. I'm not withholding anything. But um, the, the 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 my husband is in such a situation of for whatever reason is withholding it so he too how so that's the question um so please go ahead and share as the lord leads you what you were going to share and if he leads you to speak to this as well okay. please thank you thank you i, I, I would say, uh, give my opinion and then i'm sure you come and crystallize it for our sister Ify. so i just wanted to add to what our sister was saying about the fact that the men realize that your husband is not here and they make advances. It's so real. I mean, for about three years, I worked in um, a certain office where there was a guy who was consistently haunting me, saying that, by you, your husband is not here. How are you coping? That's the voice of the world, though. How are you mm. coping? And you see, they are predators. They, 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 they think, because they think like the world, they think that you're having the same sort of illicit desires that they may be having, not knowing that you're operating by a higher power. And yes, like our sister said, we need to be very, very careful about these people. But there's one scripture. Thank God for closer work because everything, nowadays I realize that everything has a basis in the word of God. I mean, if you are focusing so much on the scriptures, the Holy Spirit will keep reminding you. There's a scripture I've carried with me. And it's Genesis 39 verse 9. Um, that's 39. So this was um, when Potiphar's wife was trying to, no, not Potiphar's wife, the Potiphar's wife. Yes, was trying to um, get Joseph, Joseph involved in, you know, um, an illicit activity. He said, how can I do such a wicked thing and sin against my God? If we realize that our whole life is about honoring our father, for me, I take it so personally, I don't see why any fleshly desire, I mean, of course, we, we are human and everything, but let's not forget that we have the superior power to hold us. So that when you think about this statement, and I always say that, you see, when I go and do something in the dark and I come out, nobody sees me, I feel I'm okay. But the one most important person, or the one most important power, my God, will see me. And that's what bothers me more than whether any human being knows that I'm sleeping with someone outside my marriage and I go and do it in the corner, maybe in the afternoon, somewhere at lunchtime. Nobody's there, but God is there. It's so important. If, if you know, if those thoughts and, 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 and these scriptures continue to, to, to um, appear in our minds, we will be far away from these things. But of course, if we are, it, it's all a journey for us, you know. We some of us have walked the journey. I talked about the fact that I'm leaving the edges, cry. I don't even get them, but it's a step by step. And I'm not going to fault somebody who's just new in this situation. It, it's a step by step, but we will let the scriptures guide us. I wanted to also talk about um, sex toys again. You have your friends in the world, we've spoken about this here a couple of times. You have your friends in the world trying to prompt you. You know, and tell you that, oh, after all, God created pleasure for all of us. If your husband is not here, I mean, you know, there was a time when I had a friend who was actually standing in a shop in New York saying, I have this, I have this, I have this, which, which one do you want? And I was like, what's all this about? You know, I, I, I said, oh, I'm not, I'm not really interested. And then I came, we had a session of closer work. And it turns out that, look, sisters, all these things are devices of the enemy. Because what happens and with this particular person, apologies if she ever gets to we listen to this, but I'm talking generally anyway. Uh, there are times when you realize that, you see, these things are machines. 
when you switch them on, they do what they have to do. And the enemy will capitalize on it. Such that if your husband is not able to satisfy you or something, sometimes even rudely, with him lying by your side, you are like, ah, if you can't, me, I'm switching on my toy. We've got to be careful about these things. You know, it's an, I, I don't know whether we've talked about this here in this session, but please, God created sex between man and, 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 and woman. All these sex toys and things are from the world. That's not how God planned our sexual activity to be. So, and, and I believe that some of us, we didn't know and we are learning. So if you're already using it, we are just going to pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you to gradually let go. It is not the way to go. Because if you don't take care, it's just going to destroy your marital, your sex life forever. Because this machine, you can just go and go and go and go. When your husband is not away, instead of praying, like we've said, yes, uh, sitting somewhere and just praying, you know, seeking the face of the Lord for your marriage and spending your time to do stuff, you'll be not even missing him because the toy is doing what you know you need and then to the question our sister asked i think i um I, i've forgotten a bit of it but i, I like sister corridors please if we haven't listened to the session on oneness um, i think it was our two weeks ago marriage school the the um i've forgotten the title of it it's about oneness in marriage look mm. if 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 your husband is is talking to somebody else and it's the way I like the way start if it has the question, it's like me, there's no me. I've come to realize that if it's a one body union, you know, there's nothing that's happened to the other that doesn't affect you. You have a problem in your marriage. That's it. You have a problem. Whatever you go and see, you go and see some text messages, you go to God, God, we have a problem. No, my husband has a problem. We have a problem. And I would like to recommend now thank God for his mercies and his grace. Uh, our how to sessions ha we have it in perpetuity i hope and there are links to it there's one i want to recommend um love covers a multitude of sins our sister's husband spoke about the fight and this was from them the horse's own mouth and that makes it even more compelling about the journey he walked and the path the wife also walked and it goes back to what i said in the beginning about that knowing that your union has a problem, so they are not separating yourself to say it's him. You are praying for the problem to be fixed. And look, there's, there's the, the, the prayer of the helper done right. So you are doing your thing according to First Peter 3, 1. I've come to also realize that, look, when you are walking your path, there's no prayer you say to God that he will answer. So my sister, we will not be casting aspersions, saying negative things. So far as it concerns us, we'll be doing what we have to do. And when we go to God, ah, I mean, there was this time on Alpha Hour, the guy was saying that um, I think uh, one, one concubine came with prayers and then the wife too was praying. He said, ah, God will never answer the prayer of the concubine. So my sister, don't lose heart. We've seen it over and over again. There are testimonies. If you haven't listened to that um, recording, please listen to it. That's all. I mean, from the horse's own mouth, from the man's own mouth, and you will learn what the wife did. And how God turned everything out because our God will. So don't let the enemy use his tricks to just um, um, cause you to be the, uh, what's the word, you know, dissuaded or, you know, you, you are so disappointed. And No, it's time to get up and go to war. It will only happen for just a short while. Our Father will fix it. Take your eye off what you see and keep praying. He will do it. So if this is what I have, I'm sure you add yours to it. Thank you. We thank God. Thank God for the grace. God bless you, sis. Father, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Sister Karen, please continue for us. Hello, Sister Karen. Hope you are not struggling with unmuting. Hi, hi, sis. Hello. Yes, sisters. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, please. One key thing I want to add is that please don't trumpet that your your husband is uh, you are not staying together like he's away. I have married for a number of years and we haven't really lived under the same roof for more than two months before. 
several years in marriage. So because the enemy most often will use people around us, people will realize that, oh, okay, uh, she's uh, her husband, they don't live at the same place. So uh, we'll try to give some favors, we'll try to be nice or whatever it is. We should just desist from trumpeting that or the, yeah, a distant married person or something. That's mm -hmm. one key thing I wanted to add to it. Concerning mm -hmm. the question asked, Auntie uh, Fiona said, let's channel all our strength to God. If, if by now whoever is asking doesn't have that intimate relationship with God, this is the time to develop that relationship with God. When you develop that relationship, remember, it, he created everything that we have. So when we have that intimate relationship with him, you summon his son to him. This is your son. This is our relationship. This is what you bless us with. Have your own way. Help us. But for you to point and point and point, it won't end in you. It won't solve anything. It will rather aggravate the situation. Thank you. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Sister Karen. God bless you. Thank you. Sister Rita, please go ahead. Thank you. Good evening. Hmm. I I plan not to talk. I, I thought I didn't have anything to share. So I remember telling Auntie Epida, oh, this one day. But when sisters were sharing, the Holy Spirit just reminded me that, oh, but you have gone through this thing before. So I remember um, just like Sister Fiona and Abna and the rest. I also at a point had a distance marriage. By now, I am with my husband by God's grace in the U.S. But then for some number of years, we were away. And, you know, it was quite different because when you were dating, you didn't do anything. Then after marriage, you just taste the thing once. Then you say, hey, so this is how the thing is. Then, bam, he vanished again. And you are all on your own, you know, all over again. And it's not an easy journey. So we are not downplaying anybody this feeling and i want to emphasize that my big sisters have been sharing that one when they join closer work when they join closer work so my, maybe to someone it may sound like a cliche you people everything closer work holy spirit so i want to share from the point that then i didn't even know anything about closer work and it hasn't been anything different from what the sisters have already shared the key thing is of god so you are not going to use a sex toy or masturbate or watch pornography or anything, not because you are not feeling to or you can't even do it or you don't want to do it. But if you realize that it's going to jeopardize your relationship with God, it's a sin before your own God. Like our last sister just said, if at this point, maybe you don't really have that relationship with God, that will be the foundation. Every other sin will fall if the foundation is not there. So you 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 abstain, you restrain, not because you you want to, but because of your fear of God, because of your love of God, because of God, you will not do it. Not because of your, your husband or because of your own self. And then on the issue of sex toy and things, my personal opinion is that um I think sex goes beyond. Um, just the activity it, like we all know the, the intimacy there is more to it than just the penetration you know so if all, everything is sex toys sex toys at this point before you realize that that intimacy with you and your spouse will not even be there everything will be with you and your toy so when your toy your husband is there or not you don't mind it's just you and your toy and even when your husband is having that intimate moment with you your mind crowd will be somewhere because maybe we'll pen and them you want to finish fast and win but if it's just as or by God, go beyond that penetration. Um, I believe Lord that that's grace too. And I want to say that specifically to if those of us that are still going through or experiencing distance marriage, maybe your husband is not with you. One thing that um we did, I, I'll just mention too, that helped us both was like intentional intimacy intentional intimacy so although we are not together different time zones and all that like we had that conscious effort to be there for each 
was very busy with work and school and all that. I was also working, always clients in front and all that. But at before I close, so when I get a chance, we can just be on video. We may not be talking, but I could see him doing whatever he's doing when we have the opportunity. We could see him doing whatever I'm doing, and that helped us in in bonding and having intimacy for each other without necessarily we didn't have any phone sex and no we didn't do things but then we put in these things maybe when we we are when you are your, with your husband you can bath together and all that so maybe when i'm going to bath and the time zone maybe you'll be sleeping i'll be getting ready for work oh let me join you and that thing or sometimes we can even be on the phone and I, he will sleep whilst I work on whatever I need to work on, or I will sleep. And, you know, just that you wake up and he's still there. So that intentionality to create that bond so that you don't just leave it that, oh, because your husband is not with you, so you just shatter everything at all. Like I said, I'm not, uh, if I say closer work, maybe you join 10, 10 sections and all that. Somebody may say it's a cliche. So I'm coming from this angle and it worked. Then I saw a question in a, a sister posted in the chat about, what about having lunch? The thing is, whether lunch or dinner, if it's a trap from the enemy, the Bible says flee. We we do it in the afternoon. So if it will happen, it will happen. We will not even create the room in the first place. If this man is determined to put you down, you know, men, if a man is determined, before you realize, because of the way you are feeling, you get this. Whether lunch or just flee. Just flee, as simple as that. And um, about our sister, I will just... About of the enemy, the Christmas we have been learning from this platform over and over again. Two weeks ago, something happened to me and it's about finances. So we have this joint account. I see what is in there. We, everybody see everything, you know. Then we are pushing the money for something. And my hand is that type that <laughs> for that Christmas, he will tell you that Rita, these people need it more than we, we, we need the money. In fact, we need to use it to sort things. But before you realize, oh, he has taken it away. So our, there was a certain amount of us use something. I was praying in the morning. Can you imagine? I was praying. Then some the account. Ah. So I was doing blah 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 blah. I still took my phone. And when I opened the thing, the money was and see my heart. Now all the prayer, everything boom, everything is gone. I was angry. I took my phone, typed a long message. I'm going to send it to this man about this. Why you know we are using the money for this? Why then all sorts of voices and he send it? He likes that, and you know this money, all sorts of thoughts. For that. And on the other hand, I had another prompting, which is the Holy Spirit. I I believe that. Then why don't you wait? It's even too early. When he comes back, you can talk about this thing. Find out the truth. Don't don't you are seeing it because I had every evidence in my hands. The money wasn't there, so I can't say that I don't know what I'm saying. I had every proof. To, to back whatever I needed to say. Then I don't even know what happened. In the afternoon, it just passed by. Then come and see my mouth and my heart. I, I, I want to ask, but I also don't want to ask because I don't want to get him upset and all that. So I was just passing corner, corner some way to ask about the money. Then he was like, ah, surprise, I've redrawn the money and blah, blah, blah. Come and see me, shame, shame. Many will say, I didn't say anything. I said, oh, okay. As soon as he left, I was like, thank you, Holy Spirit. If I had sent this long message and all that, you know, and Kamaji so. So what is the point? Sometimes your this may be different from your situation, but I, I pray you will be able to take a thing. You will have every glaring evidence and, and things before you, but the whispers, the whispers, the whispers, as we've been learning, Go back to God. He will help you and he will tell you what to do. Thank you. That's what I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for speaking to us. God bless you, sis. Thank you. Sister Stella, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sister Efe. Yeah, this um, is really insightful. Thank God for this opportunity. Um, yeah, one sister was asked, was, uh, I think it was a question or sister, if it was mentioning it, that sometimes your husband may be there and uh, maybe, but he's the one who is not ready or withholding sex from you and uh, maybe having some kind of 
intimacy with um, another person or another sister or could be sometimes it could be even be attention on somebody else who could be like the same sex actually because I can relate to it I've had that experience before um, I remember at a point in my marriage here yeah, we've been married for some time over 20 years but at a point we were had we were having a few issues and the issues was really around one person, somebody that she he was getting so close to, the person was seeing him as um, that big brother in quotes. And um, they were always talking and the person was having issues in her marriage. But it got to a point that it's like, when they are talking and I'm coming, my my husband would just go into the, into the bathroom, into like, um, the washroom, you know, and just continue whispering on the phone and all that, you know, and he got to know this person through me. So it's like, I got, I, I, uh, I got so frustrated that I didn't know what to do. And they were always like talking like, oh, this person did this, this person did that. So I think one time, like the sister talking about voices, you know, something was telling me, you know, you don't have to keep quiet again. Just let them know that this is not right. Let them know that this is wrong, you know. Um, so as they were talking, I just jumped into like on the phone because um, they were in two different countries. I just jumped on the phone and said, no, you just, like you have to stop talking about people and all that. And uh, made a very big argument and all that out of it. So um, due to that, like my husband got so angry, we're not talking to each other. He even got to the stand at a point, he just moved away from the bedroom and he was sleeping in the living room. Time is like, I wasn't applying wisdom actually. Uh, I wasn't applying the wisdom of God. I was just doing things anyhow and thinking and using my own head, you know? To, to do things and that wasn't helping. I was so frustrated. And um, at a point I would just, I would just, when he goes to the living room, I would just follow him. I was creating a whole lot of scenes, but I was trying to do it when the children were asleep. We just go to him and I would beg, oh, come and sleep in the bedroom all today, yeah. You know, but at a point I said, okay, for this man to do this, because it's like something that he would never do. This is not really, you know, sometimes we don't have to take things for granted. Um, the devil uses, as our sisters are saying, they various means and various like weapons to get us, you know, various strongholds. So at a point, I realized that this battle, you know, that by, because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness. I realized that this lady that he's having this kind of, intimacy not like sexual intimacy but they were so close it's uh, if i'm not careful it will be like i'm just being jealous and um maybe the devil is just capitalizing on it using it and i'm doing everything in the wrong way and because i was doing things like in the wrong way everything was really getting worse it wasn't like getting better at all it was getting worse on a daily basis and uh, we really grew apart and he slept like in the living room I think for more than two three months or so so it got to a point that I said no this cannot continue I have to do something about it this cannot continue so when I said this I started like sort of getting closer studying my way because I realized that at that time I was you know, sometimes to when our intimacy with Christ is getting wider and we're not so close, some of these things happen so that it will create some kind of awareness to us that you need to check yourself. Because that is what happened to me. I said, no, I need to check myself. So when I decided to check myself and I started praying, maybe like gradually, the Holy Spirit started waking me up. Sometimes when he goes like downstairs to be in the living room to sleep, the Holy Spirit to wake me up at 12 midnight. Then I'll just start praying. I wasn't setting alarm or anything. Just So it continued for some time. So I'll just be praying, praying, like the Holy Spirit to take control and all that. So when I started praying, I realized that although I was still, I, I was still like concerned what is going, concerned at what is going on, I wasn't so much bothered. I had so much peace within me. You know, I had so much peace and I let it, I let God take control, you know, and when I let God take control, it's like, 
um, sometimes because at a point he wasn't talking to me that he started talking to me and even at a point he was saying all sorts of things to the children that your mom and I will break out and all that and uh, it got so bad but when I started praying the Holy Spirit started interceding. The Holy Spirit started like intervening. God actually, I think, I believe, started speaking to him. Then he started gradually. Then once in a while, then he would come and sleep in the bedroom. Then, you know, then it started getting better, you know. So, oh, so the point I'm trying to make in all these circumstances is like prayer, the Holy Spirit, you know, we always have to know that we need to form a strong relationship with God first before any other earthly relationship. Because if that relationship is established and strong, no other relationship will supersede that. And any other relationship is because the Holy Spirit is present. Because God is present, he is the one that will battle for us. You know, we don't even have to do much and he will give us the wisdom to go mm. about things because he gave me the wisdom and because of that things got better and i say this to the glory of god you know mm. amen i think i'll pause here amen thank you jesus thank you sis mm. god is good thank you for sharing we are being helped thank you lord sister dahlia please yes amen good evening I yes. hope you can hear me well. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, first of all, I need to thank God for this place, the place of prayer, the place of transform, that is the place of the work of the Holy Spirit. I, I want to thank God for that. Because who am I before is not me right now and it will be not me even in the future when God will keep changing me and changing us and I want to thank God for every sister that she share and um, every sharing that's covered by the blood of Jesus and um, the work of the Holy Spirit the continue working so me too. I want to share this for the glory of God. Um, for me before, like a few years ago or through this even years, um, this area was struggling. And I can notice that is the enemy, he don't want to leave this area. So it will be not, not the intimacy that is the Lord um, wants to us. That's why he created to satisfy each other. So first of all, this area was um, very hard to me. Even that is years, not not today. The years come in my life as even I don't care about this thing. It look like eat food, anything like wash anything, because um, that's coming the point. There's no matter for this area. And um, for the culture, for us, we have an Arabic culture. So that is most of the men or most, like some of the men, we don't need to put all of it. But I mean, this is the culture. I cannot say something else because even when it have sharing with them, with the women I know, with the sisters I know, that is the culture that is this area is very shy and this area we don't need to do so much more in it with a wife so like some some men maybe they do it out of marriage or they do it um with themselves like you know just in the secret but with the wife they 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 being shy to do these things Mm -hmm. They doing they being shy to be very intimacy with their wife, like even just okay, mm -hmm. just let done and that's it. So I was uh, trying, um, trying to do speak with my husband like this thing needs to be like this. Can we change this thing? I just really not satisfied. I just really not 
feeling that is the marriage that I was dream with and all of that. So I try to do it like one time, two times, and then years not. <laughs> like after that, one time's in my way, two times it is like years not. Um, and it was like, uh, my way is not working. Oh my goodness, what I need to do. Okay, just give up, just give up. And I wasn't pray for this area. I wasn't even covered this area at all. So that's why I thank God for this place, this place of prayer for that God work in us. Like for me through this place, it is so much work. And then I just come to realize that uh, even this area, like the area of intimacy that God put in us, when we received the teaching from Sister Effa, from uh, from Pastor Adeline, from yeah, from from them, that is it's altar for God. I just like how is this how is how is, how is become it's altar like this one? It's just like embarrassing, like to say that how is this? But the Lord showed me this. So even in that time, like I keep, like even when my 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 ways fell. I, I keep, like, after years, I try another way, I try clothes, like, makeup or something, even. And all of that, when I did all my way, like, my husband don't see anything. <laughs> and all my way, and all the clothes, and all the things I did, he don't see anything. Nothing. It's like, oh. <sighs> what it is, Lord? And then I just realized this areas belong to the Lord and the Lord showed me that is area it belongs to me too and I start when is this coming to me and when my husband coming to me I just said Holy Spirit help me help us Holy Spirit this is the area for you help us so we'll be satisfy you not ourselves so that God helping me and help me and keep helping me to put this area um, as an altar to the Lord. Like, Lord, let me satisfy you in this area too. Let me worship you in this area too. Um, and he helping me. He helping me. He helping my marriage. He changed a lot of stuff. Like when a sister shared, um, I cannot forgive him for some stuff. I cannot continue. I will go and divorce or I could go and di that is even was in my heart too. And I I would think that I my eyes was open. But when God work on me, I mean keep working on me until the day he will come. But when God is keeping work on me, I just like wow, I was blind. There was a lot of pills on my eyes that God take it off. So now as my mommy Augusta share even, like when my husband even travel, and sometimes travel months, two months, three months, I just like give it to God this time. Try to spend it with the Lord. Don't think about this area. Only just to satisfy the Lord. And I was thinking... Even I, when I'm coming to the right way, I'm just praying, Lord, let my husband love me. I am very honest. Like, Lord, I want him to love me. He don't care about me. He don't bring me, like, you know, gifts when the gift time, flower when Valentine. He's, he's don't do that. Can you do this, Lord? And I just realized this is the wrong way to pray. And God directed me. That is, may you let him love you, may you let him see you, may you let him adore you, have intimacy with you. So God, you know, my motivation to change. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, we serve in a living God. He changed um, a stone heart. My heart was a stone, was a stone, doesn't need to change. And 
God has changing the heart. And and we thank, I, we thank God that he keep in changing us. I thank God for this place that we keep in uh, learning, um, have the Holy Spirit to help us. So uh, all that I want to share to the glory of God and maybe will help somebody else. God yes. will help us and will let every testimony in this place first covered by the blood and even um, be work for every sister that she needs in Jesus name. Thank you for letting me share. God Glory says, to God. Glory Amen. to God. Glory to God. Thank you for sharing, sis. God bless you. We have been blessed and we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. I thank God and sisters, I don't know, um, please do thank God. Do thank God. You may or may not have faced these things. Maybe you faced them. Maybe you've not faced them. But we can appreciate God taking time, as always, to help us. To point us to himself and say, this one too, I do it too. I don't just give you tongues that uh, I give you, you can speak in tongues. So I, I, I help, I walk in every area of life. Somebody may think that my bedroom, when it comes to sex, how do I even discuss it with God? Like how? But to be honest with you, you are the one who is now coming into the picture. You are the one who is now covering things. But my friend, um, do you notice that he created it? Do you notice that he created it? He created our body parts, created us, created sex. So I'm not, I'm not talking to a God who, you know, like I'm not coming to reveal revelations to him. No. Just like your watch gets a problem, you are sending it to the watch repairer. He has seen these watches, uh, you know, it's not the time to say, hey, oh, hey, what will he think of me? What, 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 what can I say? <laughs> what will he think of me? No, God is involved in my bedroom. God is involved in your bedroom. And one of the things that the Lord has been teaching us, take a look carefully at the scriptures, and in particular, the Ephesians 5, you know, where he talks about husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Let the wife see to it. She respects her husband. The wife should also submit as Christ, as the church submits to Christ. Do you notice that? And, and this one, he drew my attention to it very recently. Where he says that um, in verse, verse 32, he's saying that this mystery is profound and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. Ephesians 5.32. You know, he begins with husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. Wives submit to your husbands. You know, as the church submits to Christ in everything, you know, all of that. You know, he, he keeps making the parallel parallel to Christ and the church. Christ and the church. And then when he, by the time he gets to verse 32, he explicitly states that it's a mystery. It is profound. And he is talking about Christ and the church. And yet he's talking about marriage. And the Lord was showing me to help me that, look, your marriage and Christ and your relationship, it is like one coin. You see it as two different things. It's not two different things. It's, it's one thing. So watch your relationship with me. And watch, you, you, watch your marriage. Watch your marriage. Watch your relationship with me and watch your marriage. You see, I was telling the Lord that Ah, Lord, I think that the frequency of sexual intimacy is, is not the way that it should be. 
me, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing things going at the frequency that I think it should be. And, you know, this, uh, what, 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 God, can you sort me out there? Then the Lord, that's when he, he showed me this, like he highlighted this to me again, to say to me that he said, you, you are talking about how you and your husband have intimacy and the things that seem to be coming between the two of you. But it is one coin. So check you and me and the things that are coming between me and you, you and me, and your intimacy personally with me. And he was talking to me and saying, I'm not talking about like when you are engaged in teaching or when you are thinking about how to help someone or those things like you are ministering and all of those. And yes, I will walk with you in that space. But there is also the space where it's just me and you, and you are before me, you are iffy. You are simply iffy. You are not anything else but yourself. That space, watch what it is that is coming between you. So if you can get so busy, if you can get very consumed because there are things to be done, because you need to teach here, you need to, you know, share this here, and you are checking, oh, has somebody shared a message, sent something that I need to respond to? You, if you get consumed by this, such that even when you sit down to have a personal interaction with me, you are easily distracted, or you can be, you know, sidetracked by thoughts about how you need to do this, who you need to engage, how you need to do that. Then realize that it is one coin. It's the same thing that's happening. The thing you and me are doing is what you see manifest in your marriage. So, you know, God is gracious. That's how come we are each, when we talk, then we are pointing each other to God, go to God, go to God, go to God. Why? Because you see these conversations with God, they are very personal and he knows, he knows, he knows. He knows, he knows, he knows. And he knows what Efe, Efe is doing and what Efe needs to hear. He knows exactly why. So from maybe the beginning, I think it is my husband who is not responding. I think that's where maybe the storyline started from. But by the time I took it to God, who knows all things and sees all things, he informed me of where the real problem was. And the real problem was that the marriage that I have with my husband is a, is a, is a physical manifestation of the kind of intimacy I have with Christ. It helped me. So I turned to the Lord. I said, Father, please forgive me. I don't want to you know, be distracted, sidetracked, something, something, whatever. So help me. When I sit with you, I want I want it to be just you and me. I'll forget about everything else and consistently make time that is just you and me. And he helped me. And so I began to do that. And as I began to do that, I noticed that it indeed began to change in my house as well. Indeed, it began to change in my house as well. So as quick as I was to, 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 to diagnose that the problem was my husband, he was quicker to inform me that I, can, I have something to do with it. So as you watch and you may say that, oh, eh, my husband is distracted. My husband is with you and Christ. Christ being my husband, you two, are you really sure that you yourself are not distracted from Christ? That when Jesus Christ wants to spend time with you, you are not spending time with other thoughts, other things. Are you sure that that intimacy that 
Christ is also looking at you and calling you, fe, 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 and you are busy. You are thinking, what shall we eat? You are thinking, eh, this thing is annoying me. You are thinking, huh, how about that? And how about that? How about that? And you are refusing that intimacy with Christ. And you are expecting that your earthly husband, it will be flowing well. It's one of the manifestations because the word says it. It says it is a mystery. What does that mean? That it's not, it's not, it is not what meets the eye. It goes beyond the apparent. It goes beyond what you you may immediately think. Because at the face value, you think, oh, this is my marriage. And of course, my husband should do this. And of course, I should be doing that. And I I I don't see a connection directly in those areas, how me and Christ are doing. No, I've disconnected it. But he says, no, let me show you something. This thing is one coin. When you see a certain behavior in your marriage, check with the Holy Spirit how you yourself are behaving towards Christ, your husband. And if there needs to be any shifts, any changes, any repentance, then you, you do it. Many of us have, have, have had that experience. I remember Pastor Adlan sharing, said, me, I wasn't, God was confronting me that I wasn't being intimate with God. I wasn't looking for God. I was not, but God was looking for my attention. I was also chasing my husband. Hey, 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 you have to sit with me. You have to do this. You have to do this. And you have not seen you. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not what? Not knowing, not realizing that what I don't do in my relationship with God, what I withhold, the intimacy I withhold from God, it will not show up in my marriage. The intimacy I withhold from God will not show up in my marriage. So I'll be crying. Wait, wait, wait. It is, <clears throat> it is like, it is like, um, and here, please, look at it without yielding to the temptation of sitting in assessment and judgment of the other person. I'm not talking about your husband. I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about my husband. I'm talking about me. Okay. Yeah. It's very important. This thing is very important to realize. I'm not talking about my husband. I'm talking about me, you. I'm, not, I'm talking about you, not your husband, you. So God, in his wisdom, has made this marriage to be about Christ and the church. The Christ and the church is not the church building. It's Christ and his body. And I'm a member of that body. So the relationship between Christ and me you know, is what he's talking about because I'm a member of that body. And he says it is profound. I'm talking, I seem to be talking about husband and wife, but I'm, at the same time, I'm talking about Christ and his body. So look at your marriage. Let me also look at my marriage with the Holy Spirit. And he enables me to know at this point, it is, it is your, 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 your intimacy with me, which is showing up. And the thing you are not giving me, Christ, your husband, you won't get it from your earthly husband either. Because it's one coin. Some, the damage went far. And yet God being so merciful and gracious has used those same situations to draw us to ourselves, uh, to himself. That when, before we were afflicted, before we had these challenges, we were all filled with ourselves. We were very comfortable in our spaces and we were very keen on you know, looking at other people, the, the speck in our brother's eye. We're very sharp-eyed when it comes to he, 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 he. But thank God that he caused 
or he allowed, he allowed some of these things, these principles, these laws to manifest in our lives. And he's using the experience to draw me to him because that is what is most critical. My intimacy with Christ. You walk this whole life. Marriage can be wonderful. However, is that all? Is that the deal? The true deal is my work with Christ. Remember this always. The true deal is my work with Christ. That work is the word of God and prayer. And when we say the word of God, you know, we are not talking only about limiting ourselves to reading the Bible. We are talking about reading the Bible, listening to the Bible. We are talking about considering what God has said in his word, in that Bible, considering it, thinking about it, and letting my thinking and my actions and my attitudes be influenced and guided by that word. I have lived many seasons where I read the Bible, I close it as if when I close it, we are finished. It did not seem to have any bearing on my attitude or my, oh, no, no, we have finished. We've done quiet time, we have finished. Now we deal for real, like, yeah, Charlie, forget. I'm not considering any Bible, no, nothing, something, something. Yes, so long as I think I can satisfy myself that I'm not stealing, I'm not sleeping with somebody's husband, I'm not this, I'm not that, uh, I think there's no problem. I'm just being myself. But, But I will be deceiving myself. He says, you do that, you are deceiving yourself. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. He is not mocked and he can see clearly. So please, my dear sisters, as I speak to myself and I speak to each one of us together, this life here on earth is about pleasing God and about knowing our God. That is the whole duty of man. And in every sphere, in my bedroom, outside my bedroom, in my heart, in my habits, in my attitudes, in my thinking. That is what he's talking about. And I used to think that, oh, that's boring. That's painful. Like, ah, there are things I want, Charlie, I want, I want this and I want that too. Oh, what's this, all this, something, something, something. I, I did not understand a lot. And I trust the Lord that as he's helping us, We are growing. We are growing. And as we are growing, our understanding gets better. Then that's how come you and I can agree with the word of God that uh, it is true. Take the whole world and give me intimacy with Jesus. It is better. It is true. It is true. Put everything, my feeling, my this, my that aside. Let me enter God. I would have fulfilled purpose. It's better. And you see, when you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, when you and I seek first his kingdom, his rule, standing right with him, in our hearts, in in the way we prioritize his word, his voice, in our thinking and in our decisions and in our actions. When we do that, all other things get added to it. The strength I need to stand through my seasons, the grace I need, the favor I need, the help I need, the peace I need, all other things. Seek first the kingdom of God. Don't seek first my marriage. Don't seek first the, the the sexual union. Don't seek that first. Don't let that be the thing at the center and the forefront of your ambition, your desire, your thought. And it is influencing you. You are behaving the way you are behaving. You are you have some airs. You have some attitude. You cannot even welcome your husband with a joyful smile because you already have some accusations because of your observations. You yourself, you have changed. And your behavior is not not right also, you see. 
because you have observed this, 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 this. So now out of that, you are also some way. But God says, I want to melt that some wayness. You have that some wayness and it's not beautiful. And you think you are fine. And the only problem is somebody is pinching you. Somebody may be pinching you, but, but what is coming out of you is in you. He didn't put it on you. The person did not, did not manipulate your face. The person did not manipulate your attitude. Those are your attitudes. Those are your words. Those are your behaviors. Why are you behaving the way you are behaving? Why is love pouring out of you when you are being pinched? It's because that's love in you. That's how come you are welcoming him lovingly, sweetly, even though you have observed A, B, C, D. He enters and you are not ignoring him, his presence. You are made like you, you are set. Hello, sweetheart, you are welcome. They ignore you. So what? Welcome. It's good to see you. I hope you had a good day. But it's not in you because you've observed one, two, three, four, five. So because of one, two, three, four, five, they have entered and you too. Good evening. Mm. Um, the food is on the table. Okay, I'm going to bed. That, that is what you can minister. It's in you. That one, it's not your husband that is generating it. It is you who is generating it. Is that the love that Christ has for me? Is that the love Christ has for you? Honestly, look at how Christ behaves towards me when I am distant from him. Look at how Christ behaves towards me when I am not doing as he He you know, exactly right. Look at how he behaves towards me. Never once cold shoulder. Never once. You see, never once. And this is the Christ that lives in me and the Christ that lives in you. So if me, I cannot behave like the Christ that is living in me. Then he's really highlighting to me that I live in you, but you are still running your show. And that's what I wanted to show you by allowing this thing. You think it's about your husband. It's about you. I want to show you what is hiding in you that you did not realize that I am in you, but this area, that area, that area, I want to have fuller control. So this bitterness you are seeing rise up, this accusation, this self-righteousness, this, this, this attitude, this mood, this thing, that you yourself know, I don't behave that way as Jesus. So you are on your own. Come back to me. And take my yoke upon you. Let my likeness be manifest in you. That that your husband who is misbehaving all around town will see that there is a Jesus and he looks like this. You see it in his wife. You will see it in his wife. So the Lord is our helper. I know that God willing, next week we will speak again. It will be from perhaps something related, but not necessarily, you know, a lot. God has helped us. So a lot has been shared last week, this week, and God has spoken through multiple vessels because he knows how to reach each one of us. And I want you to join me to say thank you to this God. I used to think that God is not really interested in bedroom, that he's not part of the bedroom conversation, but he is. It's about time that we looked at my intimacy with God, my personal intimacy with God. It's about time that someone now allowed God and prayer into their sex life. It's about time that someone admitted that in actual fact, they themselves have withheld intimacy from God. So what the, their husband is doing is, is just a reflection of their relationship. 
it is time that someone admitted that it is only the grace of God that has kept me all this while. That it is God who has arranged these conversations for my sake also. So there's much to, to do. Please let us talk to our Father. Father, we give you thanks. What a mighty God we said. Sister, talk to him for yourself too, you know. Mm. Thank God. Thank you, Father. Blessed is your holy name. God, what will we do without you? How would we know the right way? And how will we see? Oh God, but you have shown us the light, the truth. And you have offered us and given us the grace, the power, that all surpassing power, Father, so that nothing will be able to overcome us, but rather in you, we will walk as more than conquerors over every situation, everything, whatever it may be. I thank you, God, for how your Holy Spirit helps us to see what is specifically applicable for each one of us. I thank you for the fact that all of the wisdom and knowledge is in you. So if I seek someone who really understands what is going on and how to fix it, that you are not far from me at all. I thank you that your word is there and you, you use various ways to reveal insights to me and to us. I thank you, God, for each vessel, for each person through whom you have shared this evening and all other times. What a blessing to hear your faithfulness, to hear what you have done, to know who you are and to see the path of life. Father, the ways in which we've missed it, where we have pursued intimacy with a husband and yet we have been reluctant and we have made excuses and we have allowed other things sometimes to, to, to come in when it comes to intimacy with you. Tonight, God, you have unmasked us and we have the opportunity. Father, please, we are returning to you, returning to our first love, Returning to the God who loved us and gave himself for us a bright price that is so high and cannot be compared. We are returning to you with all our hearts. Lord, knowing that from you will come all that we need. And actually, this is the master relationship. The master relationship, the main relationship is you and us. Thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for being gracious to us, for helping us, because at the end of the age, at the end of the day, when we stand before you, God, that is what matters, that we'll be able to give an account by your grace. And you are using many ways to actually prepare us because you don't want us to, to struggle when we stand before you, to be ashamed when we stand before you. So please, Lord, we want to just say thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Father, I pray and I ask you for more understanding for each one of us. In our individual walk, each one is at a different stage, at a different place, whether that we are, we, are, we, we, are, we were here in person or we will listen to a recording at any point in time, or, you know, even if we never get to hear, Lord, we are asking for all of us grace, grace for our walk, truth to guide our steps help of your spirit to walk by the power of the spirit rather than our own flesh or willpower it cannot stand so thank you that you have granted us this grace thank you that you have granted us this help thank you father i plead the covering of the blood for each marriage here i'm calling for mercy mercy for wives help us 
helpers. Mercy for them that are supposed to help and are not helping. Mercy for us, Lord. Mercy for husbands who need help. And, and, and uh, Lord, they need help. Mercy, because the helper and the one who is supposed to be helped both need you and both need your help. Mercy, I ask for our homes. Mercy, and I receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we receive your mercy and thank you for it. I know that things have changed. Thank you for the sisters who will now invite you, open up their marriage, their sex, the, the intimacy and all of that to you. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for the new day. More testimonies are brewing because everyone who hears the word and turns to you and does it will find that you are faithful and you are true. And they too will speak of what you've done. I thank you for tonight. I thank you for the grace to share. I thank you for the grace to listen. I thank you for the questions. I thank you for the help. I thank you for your spirit. Thank you, dearest Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. My sisters, God bless you. I want to, in, in closing, I want to refer each of us to Jeremiah 33, 3, which is actually the password for our Zoom prayer link, you would have noticed. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is that it is a password to many things in your life. Jeremiah 33, 3 is a password to many things in your life. You, you seek wisdom. You seek understanding. You don't know why what is happening is happening. Whether it is because you are doing something wrong or right, or because something else is at play, you need to know and you need the wisdom as to how to fix it. Otherwise, you are fighting blind, you are walking blind, and you are misbehaving and messing things up, watering, watering Satan's pepper garden in your in your in your marriage and planting more peppers, thinking that you are you you are doing something good, not knowing that you were increasing the size of the plantation. But go to the promise of the Father in Jeremiah 33 3, and, and many other scriptures and use it. Please use it to gain understanding. Go to Jeremiah 33 3, use it, ponder it, and run with it. And what you need to be shown, you will be shown. Whether the thing is you, somebody, something, something, you'll be shown. And ask for wisdom also. Because you can be shown the root cause of something, but without wisdom, you will further make a mess. Ask for wisdom and grace and help. Because not everything will be fixed by you. But as soon as you humble yourself under God's mighty hand, as soon as you agree in your spirit to, to align yourself to the way of God and to seek the Lord, as soon as you do that, there is mighty power that God makes available and accessible. It's like you have fallen into place so that the, the workings of God can work. So it doesn't all depend on you, but a big Chang depends on me and you in the sense of just coming into place of submission to what God says, how God says I should be and seeking the way of God. So I will strongly encourage you, don't let that promise escape your grasp, please. Concerning sex, concerning money, concerning your hopes and dreams, concerning your children, concerning anything and everything that seems to be, you know, don't, don't take things at face value. Don't take things at face value. The thing is not going well. And you have concluded that it's because he's at fault. It's because she's at fault. You are taking things too simplistically. You don't understand because you are blind. You don't know. And you, you are deceived because of that. You contribute to the problem. 
But when you go to the all-knowing one, based on his word, and ask for understanding, and ask for wisdom and illumination, I am telling you, my sister, that the enemy will say, oh dear, she has found the key, because the Holy One has the key. And he will give it to you because it is his will that all of us come to a knowledge of Christ, grow in our knowledge of Christ and grow in our relationship with him. Somebody needs to do this. And it might not be just a matter of your bedroom. But wherever it is, this word applies. Go to that word. Seek your father. Go to your father. Let this word be true. Act as if this word is true. Behave as if this word is true. And stay behaving that way. Don't stop. Oh, and then I prayed. And I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Hey, master, stay on course. Stay on course. You don't see anything. So where are you going? Safe journey. Stay the course. Where else can you go? Because those who keep their trust in the Lord, those who stay the course will realize that God has never been a liar, will never be a liar, cannot be a liar, will never be a liar. They will testify. Your, your testimony that God is a liar will be erased. He's, he claims that I should call upon him, blah, blah, blah. I've called him. He's not answering. He's not answering. He's not answering. He's a liar. That's what you are saying. That testimony is evil. It's not from God. It is because the enemy of our souls is trying to say something to you as he always does. But stay your course. Insist that your God is true. Insist that he, he what he has said is what he has said to come true. And you will find out that it is indeed true. May the Lord continue to minister to each of us through the night and through the days, each day, each moment, with exactly what you need and what I need, that we may honor him in every sphere of life, both in the private, unseen spaces of our hearts and our attitudes and the seen places of our behaviors and habits in our homes and outside. God bless you. So we will turn to prayer and it will be pray, praying in the spirit. And as many of us as are able to, I encourage you to stay on and pray for a while. Just pray, continue to speak to God. Now, whether you stay on or not, I still encourage you to continue to speak to the Father, to worship him, to honor him, to take steps closer to him. He is waiting for each of us. God bless you. Please let's share the grace and then I hand over to the, the, the person who will be leading us in prayer tonight. Um, please let's share the grace. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness, his mercy, follow us all of the days of our lives. And we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, my dear sisters. God is good. So we turn to prayer. Please let us do that, whether on or off soon. Okay.